Good evening, I'm Leah Myers, a proud alumna of the class of 2018 and granddaughter of Sam and Lois Bergamy. I am honored to kick off this long-anticipated celebration of the grand opening of the Bergamy Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation. Today is such a special day for alumni and friends of the University of New Haven, as well as our students, both current and future. I want to thank Grandpa and Grandma for their vision of this amazing building and the students who first came up with the idea of a collaborative space to benefit all students. While today marks a momentous occasion in the university's 100-year history, it also marks my grandfather, Sam Bergamy's 76th birthday. So, on that note, the happiest of birthdays to my grandfather and special welcome to the Bergamy Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation. Please welcome University of New Haven President Stephen Kaplan. Good evening and thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here at the opening of this remarkable facility. I want to open by, of course, thanking Sam and Louis Bergamy for their vision, their incredible philanthropy, and their commitment to this fine university. I'm not gonna talk about the building, others will do that. I'm not gonna talk about the students, the students will come up here and you'll see who's gonna benefit from this building and why it's important. I'm gonna do what Lois Bergamy would want me to do. If I asked her what should I talk about, she would say quite simply, him, meaning Sam. Sam Bergamy is a remarkable human being. He's generous, he's compassionate, he's highly intelligent, and perhaps what defines him more than anything, at least in my experience, he has an incredible sense of humor. He's just a well-rounded human being. So who is Sam Bergamy? And I'm gonna to try to answer that question with two brief stories that illuminate the Sam Bergamy I've come to know and respect and cherish as a friend. There's a Sam Bergamy who never graduated from college and eventually came to the University of New Haven some 40 years ago and asked to be admitted into our executive MBA program on the basis of his work experience. He was the second to last person to be admitted to the program under those circumstances, and what a great decision that was. So why didn't Sam complete a college degree? Because he went to work after serving as a disc jockey for a number of years, believe it or not, at a company called Alina Ball as a machinist and as a self-taught machinist. And he worked his way up. He watched the company struggle under failing management, and he became a manager. And he worked his way up in management to a point where eventually he saw that the only option for him was to put everything he had ever saved, including the home he owned, on the line to buy the company. And that he did. Quite a decision, considering he had three little children at home, a family to support, and not a lot in the way of discretionary money. He took on enormous debt, great risk, but he clearly succeeded. The wealth that that decision generated did not stay in Sam Bergamy's bank account. It went back into the company and eventually a lot of it went into this great university. Sam generated wealth not for Sam and Lois Bergamy or their children, but for others. And this building is a testimony to that goal of his, to help others, to improve humanity and to pr improve the lot of humankind. The other aspect I'd like to talk about in terms of who Sam Bergamy is that many people would know is Sam's interest in what drives this building, which is innovation and science, and why we have Michio Kaku speaking this evening at the opening of this building. An author who Sam Bergamy admires greatly because of his own personal interest in science. So years ago, when Sam and I began discussing a transformational gift that eventually led to many other projects on this campus, but eventually this building, I asked Sam, I said, so where's it going to be? Is it going to be in business or is it going to be in engineering? And Sam looked at me quite surprised and said, neither. Science, of course. Most people don't know this, but my real interest is in science. I want to fund a building that will enhance science learning and increase innovation among the students at the University of New Haven. And that's what he, in fact, here has done. So what does all this mean to me and what should it mean to our students? That Sam would be the first to say that a formal education is something that everyone should pursue and cherish with great vigor. But ultimately Sam Bergamy would agree with the great author James Joyce in his novel Ulysses that in the end, life is the great teacher. 
And if I could leave you with one lesson that I know Sam Bergamy would want me to impart to all of our students, that's indeed it. Life is, in fact, the great teacher. One of the wonderful aspects of the Bergamy Center is that it will serve students from across disciplines and across the five colleges of the university. One such student is Tiara Stark, a member of the class of 2022. Tiara is studying communications with a concentration in film production and has a minor in business management. She spent the summer working as a digital intern at a global marketing company. She is a wonderful example of a fully engaged student, having served in multiple roles on the Charger Bulletin newspaper, having served in the theater club. She is a representative of the student chapter of the NAACP, and she's a member of the Victimology Club. Tiara is a distinguished scholarship recipient who says that her goal is, quote, to work in the entertainment industry while promoting social change. I am pleased to welcome Tiara, who will say a few words. Tiara, thank you for joining us. Thank you, President Kaplan. I'm excited to join you to help celebrate this amazing space and all it will mean to me and my fellow students. We're really eager to work in this beautifully designed center with state-of-the-art equipment, but we're also excited because it truly is a multidisciplinary space, not the territory of just one college. This center belongs to all of us from all majors and schools, and it will allow us to collaborate with each other in ways we can't begin to imagine. I'm really looking forward to working in the new communication studio with the high-end equipment that will help me build my portfolio and prepare me for my career. But I'm also looking forward to working in the huddle rooms with my business classmates, sitting outside the makerspace watching the projects underway, and enjoying a meal with my friends in the cafe. This building was really designed for students, and I can't wait to start exploring. The support that has been provided for the Burgamy Center is extraordinary, and I want to say thank you to all who donated so generously to make it possible, particularly to Mr. and Mrs. Sam Burgamy for their leadership gift and for believing in the vision of the students who first articulated the need for a building like this. Vision is wonderful, but it really took your transformative gift to make it a reality. On behalf of all current students and the generations of students to come, thank you so much. We're truly grateful. I am now honored to welcome Sam and Lois Bergamy. Thank you, Steve. It is a great honor and privilege for Lois and me to be part of today's special event. The University of New Haven has long held a special place in our hearts, and we are grateful to the, be able to give back to the institution that means so much to us and to so many others. Since I was a student in the university's executive MBA program in the 1980s, I have felt passionately about the important role the university has played in impacting and shaping the lives of generations of students. Lois and I have been fortunate throughout our long association with the university to interact with many students. We are continually impressed by the dedication, their ambitious goals, and the drive to make a difference. Students like our own granddaughter, a member of the university's class of 2018, who is now a digital content producer for WTNH, working in one of the biggest news markets in New England. In these uncertain times we are facing, what gives me great confidence in the future of these students, our future leaders, who will undoubtedly leave their mark on the world. This is truly a humbling day for Lois and me to see the vision for this facility become a reality. Ultimately, though, we would not be here today without the leadership of Steve Kaplan. When I first met Steve, I quickly realized that he would be an incredible ambassador for the University of New Haven and that he would take the university to great heights. Many years ago, Steve approached me with a proposal in which a science center would bear the Burgamy family name. I told him that the time wasn't quite right, but when it was, Lois and I would be pleased to support something in the sciences. Years later, Steve came back to me after a meeting with the students who shared with him the concept for a facility that would not only include science labs, but also feature innovative collaborative spaces where students could create. The vision Steve shared, and I knew it was also the vision of the students, was inspiring. Lois and I are very pleased that we were able to play 
a part in helping that vision become a reality. Thank you to the leadership of so many, the Board of Governors, friends of the university. The Burgamy Center, I think, is even better than what any of us could have ever imagined. While Lois and I wish we could be on campus with all of you to tour the Burgamy Center in person, given the current social distancing requirements, this is really the next best thing. On behalf of our entire family, Lois and I would like to thank everyone for joining us today and for your support of the University of New Haven. Now, let's take a virtual tour of this extraordinary facility. Welcome to the Burgamy Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation. I am Jay Brotman, the managing partner of Spiegel's Plus Partners, the architects that brought you this magnificent new building. We wanted to make sure that the design of this building met the university's mission and vision for this particular facility. So we selected the spaces that became part of the Burgamy Center through a really engaging programming process. We had members from facilities, department heads, staff members, and even students, and together we created a shared vision for the building. All the spaces are interdisciplinary in nature. Um, they can be shared, and they really foster collaboration between students and professors. One of our first challenges when looking at a new building on a campus like this is to decide actually where to put the building. We proposed a building adjacent to Buckman Hall and uniting the two of them with a light-filled atrium that would become the heart of the new facility. When we began to think about just what shape this building would take, we really wanted to find a way to make it represent what's going on inside the building. And so we came up with these volumetric forms that have an interplay against each other. So the dark black brick and glass tower at the center is this disruptive force that interrupts the flow of the building where it starts out very rectilinear and comes out the other end curved and moving in a new direction. So the building itself is symbolic of that aha moment in scientific inquiry when you get disrupted and take your thinking in a new direction, which is really necessary um, in the process. There are many features of our atrium space that really come together to make a there there for the students. Um, first of all, there's the space itself. It's full of flexible furniture that allows students and professors to meet in groups. Um, and then there's some side spaces called huddle rooms where students uh, can work in small groups and retreat, close the door, have access to technology, um, and really hunker down for the day or just a couple hours to get their group project done. Um, the cow wall, which is this great uh, clear story of overhead, brings in natural daylight through the entire day. Open glazing in the north and the south to really foster those views uh, to other points on campus. The collaborative classrooms, they have operable partitions that can open, um, and so you can use the classrooms for a traditional classroom, but you can also open the spaces and be able to use um, the classrooms in a new function. At the very end of our atrium, we have a resource zone where students uh, can meet with faculty members that may be using a touchdown station for the afternoon, um, have a few office hours, providing enough spaces that students and faculty can engage with each other. Um, and most importantly is cafe. Um, everyone needs a little food and drink to power them throughout the day. And so you can grab a coffee, find a, your desired spot to sit and do your work for the day. One of the accessory spaces to the atrium on the third floor is the auditorium. It's a 120 seat space that has a few different functions. Most obvious is the traditional lecture. Uh, has full cinema functions, so uh, it can be used to preview movies that are created by the communications department. And it also has 3D capabilities, so a science student can go and have a class there and look at a DNA strand in 3D. 
And what we did was to open up Buckman so that it would relate to the new makerspace that is displayed here at this prominent entry. We took two full whole bays of the Buckman building and opened it up totally to glass so that there was a connection, a visual connection from the engineering shop there through to the new makerspace all the way out into the new maker plaza outside the building. Uh, this dynamic really helps to knit the two buildings together and create this real maker zone. The communications and media studies department has a significant footprint in this building where they will be working across disciplines to teach other students how to present their ideas. The eSports major is interdisciplinary in nature, so it fits in well to the concept of the Burgamy Center, smartly combining science, technology, and innovation. When we were initially conceiving of the artwork concepts for the Burgamy Center, there were really two ideas that were important. The first is that we wanted to reflect the inner workings of these buildings, so physics, engineering, chemistry, craft, and we also wanted to capture the spirit of these disciplines, a spirit of transformation and evolution and innovation. Both the sculpture on the exterior terrace and the wall trellis in the atrium were inspired by the Mura Ori fold. This is an origami fold. It's a, a traditional fold. In origami, you have this two-dimensional form that begins to emerge and transform, almost evolve into something else. And so the trellis in the atrium actually transforms from a line drawing on the wall into some three-dimensional flat panels, and then they begin to pull out from the surface, and as they they move up the wall, they fly away from the surface and across the room. Hi, I'm Lou Anino. I'm the Associate Vice President and Chief Facilities Officer here at the University of New Haven and also a proud alumnus. I hope that you've enjoyed your first look at the Burgamy Center for Science, Technology and Innovation. On behalf of the University, I would like to first start by thanking Sam and Lois Bergamy for their very generous contribution um, without which this would have never happened. I would also like to thank the very creative uh, designers from Siegel's Plus Partners led by Jay Brotman, Caitlin Chapin and Julia McFadden as well as the construction team from Consigli Construction led by Anthony and Matthew Consigli. Most importantly, I'd like to thank the, the university community at large who collaborated to bring Sam and Lois's vision to life. Thank you for joining us tonight. We look forward to welcoming you back to the campus as soon as possible to experience this amazing building in person. Please join us as we toast Sam and Lois Bergamy.